The following is a presentation of National Speed Sport News. Tonight on Speed Sport Magazine, July is one of the best months of the year for sprint car racing, and we've got you covered. Highlights from USAC's Indiana Sprint Week and the World of Outlaws Kings Royal are here. In an exclusive interview, drag racing champ Shirley Muldowney tells us how her love of racing began and describes her difficult road to becoming the first woman of the NHRA. Plus, former F1 and NASCAR star Nelson Piquet Jr. will stop by to talk about his new quest, Global Rally Cross. And did we mention King of Wings from Oswego? Oh yeah, we've got super modifieds too. Time to drop the green flag for Speed Sport Magazine. Hi everybody and thanks for tuning in to Speed Sport Magazine. I'm your host, Ralph Shaheen. Hey, if variety is your thing, then you've come to the right place. We've got stories on sprint cars, rally cars, drag cars, stock cars, and even super modifieds all queued up in the back and ready to blow your mind. Let's begin with the 27th annual USAC Indiana Sprint Week. Seven races, nine days, one champion. This is non-wing sprint car racing at its best. Indiana Sprint Week kicked off in dramatic style thanks to Jeff Bland Jr. in the white and orange car on the top. During the B main, Bland tested the high groove and lost. He tumbled off the track, but was okay. On to the main event and the three wide salute to the fans. Pole sitter John Stambro in the Black 37 came into Gas City having won two of the past three races, but this night, that white number 40 of Justin Grant would give him a serious challenge. As Stambro gets stuck in traffic, Grant goes high, then Grant goes low, then Grant goes high again. This time in the final corner of the final lap, but he just couldn't get there as Stambro leads flag to flag to earn his third win in four races. We started off good before and uh, things have gone sour and then I started off bad and things have gotten good and pulled the, pulled the championship out. So our main goal is just to run up front, try to win some races and do the best we can and hopefully a championship will come at the end of the week. Race two, Kokomo Speedway. Black number 71 of Dave Darlin set the track record earlier in the day, then wheelied his way through to the front from his third row starting position. By lap five, Darlin had the lead but for the second night in a row, the white 40 of Justin Grant was the thorn in the leader side, harassing Darlin on multiple occasions, including the last lap as Darlin grazes the wall. But in the end, Grant couldn't get the position as Darlin narrowly powered to the checkers first, claiming his 51st career USAC sprint car win, second on the all-time list. Had a great race tonight. The O'Connor was here at the Kokomo Speedway. Give us a great racetrack. You know, quite regularly, it's uh, it's always, almost always, good and racy and dicey, and uh, you just can't ever, you know, let up. You know, I got a little slower there towards the end, and Justin got me a couple times, and uh, you know, I was luckily I was able to get him back. After rain washed out night three at Lawrenceburg, Indiana Sprint Week got back in gear at the Terre Haute Action Track, where Landon Simon in the number 24 provided some of the early heat race action. In the main event, Brady Bacon in orange 69, Robert Ballou in the white 12, Dave Darlin in the black 71, and defending national champ Brian Clawson in the blue 20 had a spirited battle for the lead. But the victory would ultimately be decided between Ballou and Clawson. Clawson made the move for the lead, taking his Tony Stewart owned car to victory lane, which was his first win at the track. Bacon came home in third, with Chris Windham finishing fourth. Windham's consistency has him on top of the Indiana Sprint Week standing. We got a lot of work to do. This so by no means uh, puts us in the driver's seat. You know, I'd like to just go out and, and grab it by the horns and just lead the whole thing. But uh, you know, we still got some work to do. Uh, but uh, long three nights. You know, we're technically only halfway right now. So um, you know, we'll we'll take tonight as a, as a big victory and. Uh, uh, hopefully give ourselves some momentum going into the stretch run the second half here and you know, pick up a, a career first uh, victory here at Terre Haute Speedway. It's uh, pretty special, especially during Indiana Spring. Three races down and three races to go. The series headed for Putnamville, where A.J. Hopkins tested out the durability of his roll cage in qualifying. The good news, he was okay. The bad news, the car was not. The current Indiana Sprint Week points leader, Chris Windham, started on the front row in the blue number 11 and challenged Robert Ballou for the race lead. But on lap 23, Wyndham spun out of the championship lead when he and Kevin Thomas got together after a restart, nearly collecting Brian Clawson. 
Justin Grant, however, wasn't as lucky. That left Ballou to battle Brian Clawson for the night's honors. And while the Terre Haute winner gave Ballou a fierce fight, Ballou had just enough to edge Clawson for his sixth career USAC sprint car win. That moved him from sixth to third in the Indiana Sprint Week standings behind new leader Clawson in second place, Dave Darling. But it's all I've done my whole life. Uh, my dad told me to never give anything half-assed and uh, you know, sold all our pavement stuff over the winter and uh, you know, and uh, we sold one of our other motors and, and I was fortunate enough to buy this thing from Don Ock. He gave me a hell of a deal and it's definitely turned our whole operation around. Clausen carried his momentum into the penultimate round of USAC's Indiana Sprint Week as he led the field to the green flag. But his title rival Dave Darwin stole the early lead. Behind them, new track record holder Hunter Schurenberg in the white number 20 was moving forward. He picked off Clausen for second, then flew by Darlin on the high side to grab the race lead. Darlin would then lose second to Clausen as a caution came out for Tyler Courtney's flip. Fortunately, he was uninjured. On the restart, Clausen took advantage of his proximity to the leader and claimed the top spot from Schurenberg with five laps to go and never looked back as he claimed his second win of the week extending his Indiana Sprint Week points lead to 10 over Darlin with just one race to go. And the opportunity presented itself and, and uh, we love winning races with the Chevrolet Performance Curve Records car. So, uh, you know, we took it and uh, put it down here in Victory Lane. Now to Hobbs out tomorrow night, what's your, uh, what's your strategy for tomorrow? Oh, win again and nobody can beat us. But, you, uh, you know, obviously got some work to do, but uh, still, still a long night of racing ahead of us. But uh, you know, this thing's been rolling pretty good so far. And, uh, uh, you know, if we can just uh, keep it up, we'll be in good shape. So Brian Clawson and company made their way to the finale, where Robert Ballou put his car on the pole and took the early lead. Kyle Cummins posed the only threat to Ballou on this night as the two swapped the lead. But it was Ballou who proved to be the strongest as he muscled to his second win in three races, finishing the week second in the standings. Behind the leaders, Clawson managed a fourth place finish, securing his second consecutive USAC Indiana Sprint Week title. Oh, uh, it's uh, it's special. This is uh, you know growing up, uh, cutting my teeth at the short tracks of Indiana. When before I was old enough to run Indiana Sprint Week, you, you come to these races and uh, you know they have the biggest crowd, the, the best group of cars. You know you get to anybody that's anybody in non-wing racing shows up for these races to test themselves and uh, you know to come out on top is uh, it's a it's a pretty cool feeling. Here in the final standings for the 27th annual USAC Indiana Sprint Week. Blossom's the champ again. Ballou moved up to the runner-up spot with his win in the finale. Dave Darlin came home third, but leads the USAC National Sprint Car standings over Brady Bacon, who finished up the week in fourth. Rounding out the top five was Gas City winner John Stambro. Man, what a great week of sprint car racing. And as we look ahead to upcoming episodes of Speed Sport Magazine, we'll have exclusive conversations with two sprint car champions, Tony Stewart and Steve Kinzer. You're not gonna wanna miss those. Still to come tonight on Speed Sport Magazine, we'll button up our coverage of USAC's Indiana Sprint Week in the Fast Orange Hit the Loud Pedal segment. You don't wanna miss that. And we'll introduce you to one of the coolest additions to the motorsports lineup. Red Bull's Global Rallycross title contender, Nelson Piquet Jr. is here in the studio. But up next, Shirley Muldowney turned the NHRA drag racing world upside down, then became the series' first three-time top fuel national champion. We'll hear her incredible and candid story after this. Since 1934, National Speed Sport News has been America's motorsports authority. Every month, Speed Sport Magazine comes alive with stunning photography, insightful commentary, and in-depth features. You will get the full story with Speed Sport Magazine. To start your home delivery of America's Motorsports Authority, log on to nationalspeedsportnews.com and hit the big yellow subscribe button. Be the fan in the know. Just go to nationalspeedsportnews.com and click subscribe.